Hey man, get your 80s synth music out of my very 90s it film. Special appearance? Special appearance? Tim Curry is the sh don't get me wrong, but he's also a f***ing regular cast member, not a huge star slumming it for TV. Remember, the Rocky Horror Picture Show was still just a cult fave in 1990. And even though it's an awesome movie, Clue bombed at the box office just a few years earlier. Damn, Dick, pick a lane. Either go with the aggro slasher synth style in the opening credits or this lush language score. My horror boner's getting confused. Much like Cinema Sins, Derry is a dick to movies. That was some terrible CG lightning. I'm guessing they must have saved all their effects budget on the spider alien at the end of the movie. And it's gonna look spectacular. You know the movie's going for a real sense of terror when they get the director of Halloween 3 and Aloha Summer to come aboard. She's gonna have a cow when he sees you nosing around, Mike. <laughs> Having a cow. The show's script screams, I have seen this recent phenomenon of The Simpsons and are hip to the new catchphrases the younglings are spouting. There's something terribly wrong here in Derry. If Mike pronounces the word terrible this way, why doesn't he make the same sound for Derry? This dude has Charles Barkley syndrome. Hey, I'm the cop, you're the library. Strangely enough, I'm the cop, you're the librarian was the very last game my college girlfriend and I played together before she left. Did Pennywise leave that random picture of Georgie just to f*** with Mike? And that's not an original picture or anything. So does he have a photocopier down there in the sewer? Where does he get the ink? Also, why is Mike even still alive? Nowhere does it say Pennywise can't kill adults. In fact, nowhere does it say what Pennywise is capable of or not capable of doing. Kinda hard to have a rooting interest when I have zero clue what the f***ing rules even are. May 28th, another killing today. Dictation narration. Diction? But I hope I'm wrong. Oh, I hope to God I'm wrong. Dear killer clown, God in hackneyed heaven. This music and line delivering is straight out of a daytime soap. What is this, Days of Our Pennywise? In case you confused it with the Hampstead Heath subdivision in eastern Sacramento. Taggart steps onto the moors as the fog curls around his ankles. God damn, there's a lot of imaginary narration while writing in the first few minutes of this f***er. I feel like there should be a narration of me writing this sin. Wait, I am narrating this sin, but that's in the future. Not when I'm actually writing it, but by the time anyone sees this, it won't matter when I wrote it. So am I technically narrating this right now? What is reality? Yeah, Sorry, I had to run to the ER to treat an aneurysm. Okay, carry on. It's cold. It's also fish sticks, so does it really matter? Besides, if they're gonna hire somebody to mangle one of my books, might as well be me. Said by a character in an adaptation of a Stephen King novel where Stephen King did not write the screenplay. It's not what I do, Audra. Writing is what I do. And ponytails. I do ponytails. What I meant to say is I do writing and ponytails. Greco. Greco. Bolo. Swear to me that if it isn't dead, I'll come back. Swear shadowing. Sorry, Mike. For a minute there. You didn't know who I was. For a minute there, I didn't. Well, sure. Take away the whole I'll give you a call if this f***ing clown comes back amnesia, the Losers Club has. You still have two people that haven't spoken in 30 plus years. Bill, it's back. Sure, it's literally the name of the miniseries. But even so, I can't let an obvious pronoun game slip by me without a sin. Jesus, even by European standards, that's a ton of butter for just these two. What was up with the lighting and cellars in the 80s? Them shits never worked. Yuck, you've got cooties all over me. Based on the signs of a fever that Bill is showing, I'm guessing if anyone got cooties from that exchange, it was Georgie. Don't stay out too long or Mom will have a bird. What's next? Is someone gonna have a llama? A fruit bat? An orangutan? I gotta be honest, this actually looks like fun. But it also means that this street is at a perfect slope for this boat to float at a consistent pace all this way. And that's some bullshit. Since everyone knows, there are no elevation changes in Maine. Um, he had plenty of time and opportunity to prevent this. So getting his arm bitten off is 100% on Georgie. Hi, Georgie! Iconic moment. Even though Bill Skarsgård definitely kills it in the remake, Tim Curry is the OG of Nightmare Fuel, and thus shall be recognized with a removal of a sin. Hi, Georgie. I'm Pennywise the Dancing Clown. You are Georgie. So now we know each other. I guess so. Kits. Sad scene made less sad when one is distracted by the weak-ass rain machine on display. It literally looks like four angels are pissing on them. Damn, can anyone in this series umbrella properly? They only brought three for this entire funeral party, and no one's using it to cover the priest whose open Bible is getting soaked? I don't want you ever coming in here again, son. Do you understand? So I'll immediately leave you alone in the very room I forbade you from entering. Also, oblivious overbearing adult does something oblivious and overbearing in a Stephen King property cliche. And slowly zoom, now look up like you saw something strange in the ceiling. Continue zoom. Now gently cup your hand to the side of your face like your cheek is your long lost lover. And faster zoom. And dissolve all your version of yourself in the same very normal and natural position. And perfect. Where do we collect our Emmys? I forgot. How could I forget? Says everyone who remembers liking this movie and then watches it almost 30 years later. Hey, I thought this was jolly old England, but this driver's on the left side. This is an American tragedy. Eh, come on. This isn't the best made for TV Stephen King adaptation, but it's no sometimes they come back. No, 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 no. 
this yours? So she doesn't know him. Is she an architect groupie? Are those a thing? I have so many questions. <laughs> time. Man, I was so convinced there's no way any architects have made the cover of Time I did the research. And apparently there's been 16 covers featuring architects. And for that being easily the most boring research I've done since Peru geography for the Emperor's New Groove, I'm counting this as a sin. Whoever got the inspiration to paint this tuba was clearly on some serious and awesome drugs. And what was Jack tripping on when he bought it? This phone cord. Mike? Yeah, buddy. It's come back. I don't doubt that Mike's been able to track everyone's phone number down, since he's an industrious librarian, but he's catching these people at home? Like, did he leave any messages for the losers, or did he get them all on the first try? I'll come. Well, not anymore, since Mike blindsided and cockblock you tonight. Why is Robot Chicken sporting a mint green shirt now, when just a few seconds ago he was wearing this striking mustard stripe number? You're dead, fat boy. How am I supposed to take any of this seriously when your over-the-top Stephen King bully looks like a cross between Ed Grimley and Eddie Monster? It's like Stephen King wrote a terrifying metaphorical look at adolescence, and this production is doing everything it can to undermine it. The sheriff has instituted a 7 p.m. curfew. Considering Georgie was killed during the day, how does getting the kids by 7 seem safe? Hey, Henry. Come on, don't really cut him. I get their point, but if Bowers is this close to being a full-blown serial killer because he got detention, have they not seriously seen signs like this before? I hate it when you stutter my name, Bill. You sound like Elmer Fudd. Sorry. Bet you Bill is regretting going out of his way to help Eddie out with the asthma attack right now. F***ing Eddie. I know we need to build some camaraderie among these kids to set up the rest of the series, but this is entirely too many seconds of the boys bonding by semi-casually throwing rocks into a goddamn creek. I hate you! You're only here because Mom says it's our Christian duty! Jesus, is there any character outside the Losers Club that's halfway decent in this f***ing miniseries? At this point, I expect that the homely school teacher is actually a savage meth dealer. Benny, you must! Oh, I hate it here! I hate it here! I'm going to need you to get your Douglas Sirk melodrama out of my child-murdering clown movie, in case you confused it with Peter Cetera's Chicago. We've got a minute, I'll take it. No, get their number and close the door. I haven't seen this big a corporate dick since Ellis called Hans Gruber Bubby. Don't ever contradict me in front of Pam again, okay? You see what I mean? This miniseries has more exposed assholes than the orgy scene from Caligula. Not ever, ever, ever again! I'm a big fan of knocking this dickhead out, but the plastic jar of hand cream did it? What's that made of, Led? You get right the hell back here, baby! What a poor girl with the skin off of you! Things you could say to kids in 1960. Yeah, yeah, he just knows. Yeah. 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 No. No one will be seated during the kids in the 60s play the real life version of Minecraft portion of the movie. Your hair is winter fire. My heart burns there too. It's odd that Beverly thinks the poet now is Bill, even though Ben clearly crept up on her shortly after she ran away from her crazy father. Say hello to your friends, Beverly, if you try to fight us. <laughs> Die. Really? Because so far Pennywise has just done a bunch of rudimentary parlor tricks and some play playacting. I can't figure out if I'm supposed to be scared or judging his performance based on a scale of 1 to 10. In case you confused it with Great Tits California. I have to go away for a while. Away? Where? This entire scene that introduces Eddie is an Alfonso Cuaronish one-shot, and thus has no business being in a largely derided network TV miniseries. Yeah, it's unfair that I'm turning this cool little surprise into a sin, but my hands are tied. <laughs> Now showing Scream 3D, it's 30% screamier. I Was a Teenage Werewolf was released in June of 1957, which makes this viewing bullshit in two ways. First, this is supposed to be 1960, and second, the kids wouldn't be attending classes in the middle of summer. Let's get out of here! Yeah, let's go! But you're already halfway down the f***ing block, man. This is something you say when you're still in the theater. Honestly, the fact that confused and intently staring Ben hasn't become a widely used gif is maybe the biggest sin of this whole series. These kids are walking around so happily that it's absurd they don't run into the bullies. Hell, they're practically asking for it. I think I'd want to bully them if I saw them walking around this happily. Here I am, Wheezy! I've never understood how Pennywise decides how to appear to the kids. Like with Georgie and Eddie, he's just the clown. But he did the blood thing with Beverly, the winking picture with Bill, the werewolf with Richie, and Ben saw his f***ing dad. So does he do only the clown thing when he's already booked for other events? Mike Hanlon from Derry, do you remember? Okay, now I'm officially calling bull on Mike's ability to contact these assholes. He's seriously new to call this exact number in the dressing room of a late night show Richie just happened to be appearing on? What about subbing for Carson on Monday night? Or who's gonna sit behind the desk and make funny? Based on the stand-up routine we just watched, not Richie. Let Leno do it, I don't care. Among the many atrocities of Pennywise the Clown, the worst may be its role in advancing Jay Leno's career. We now go to six human children in their natural habitat, sitting exactly like actual children sit and not at all as if they've been posed by an overzealous staging department. Ah, sudden Teen Wolf prequel! What what is with all the goddamn puppies on the wall here? Don't get me wrong, I love a good puppy picture, but do they hold any educational value to be of service in this classroom? Hi, partner. Give it here! The biggest mystery of this movie is how the f*** 
Bowers knows the path each of these kids takes home. Also, how does Benedict Cumberbatch Jr. choose who to bully on a given day? Has Mike done anything to him? He's not even really affiliated with the losers yet. It wasn't a clown at first. Was a werewolf. I've been lenient with these incessant flashbacks, but considering we are in Mike's flashback right now, there's no way he would remember this part of this conversation. You're gonna get a surprise! You're gonna get such a surprise! And you're gonna get cake and ice cream and maybe one of those bounce house things, whether you like it or not! <laughs> this fight is choreographed about as well as the worst Power Rangers episode you've ever seen. I'll kill you all! I'll kill you all! Part of the reason the 2017 remake was so effective was that it didn't bounce back and forth between the kid and adult characters, so if you hadn't read the book, you wouldn't know if the kids would make it. So this part of the story really has no stakes when it comes to threats from Henry or Pennywise. Pennywise the clown? That's him. That's him! Yeah, but he never said his name to Richie, and that picture really looks nothing like him, other than it's a drawing of someone with clown makeup on. It. It. Roll credits. I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all. But I'm really going to focus on the driving you crazy part because that makes you tastier, even though I've already killed a bunch of other kids that weren't crazy. Between you and me, they weren't that essential to the plot. It's all the other kids, too. Like Thelma Daniels, she was in my class. Um, doesn't that mean that poor Thelma was in everyone's class? They don't see what we see. Why? When you grow up, you stop believing. It's scared of us, you know? How in the ever loving the Sequest and his crew here know so much about Pennywise all of a sudden. They literally just discovered everyone saw a similarly odd thing a few minutes ago. You okay? I think this is crazy. What? Seven kids banding together to stop a murderous demon clown? This might be the least insane thing Stephen King ever wrote. He wrote a book about cell phones turning people into flesh-eating zombies. Ten out of ten. Don't think I need to shoot. Sure, but you know who should shoot some more? The continuity department. When Bev takes aim, there are only seven targets. Two white bottles, two black bottles, and three cans. She shoots a white bottle first, a tin can next, the other white one third, a black one fourth, and the other black one fifth. Somehow, she then shoots a third white bottle that never existed for a total of only six shots. Not only is it not ten out of ten, it's six out of six with two disappearing cans and a magically reappearing white bottle. Okay. silver! They can kill it. Believe, Stanley, we have to. Sold. My dad says you have to know when to take a stand. Really? Are we sure any of these kids actually have parents? We've only seen a few of them briefly. Then they just conveniently disappear. Hell, Eddie's mom was supposedly way overprotective. But his ass has been out and about this whole time. <laughs> no, guys. Puff Puff Pass goes to the left-hand side. The f it was weird enough Henry could track the kids through town, but now they're pretty far out here in the goddamn woods, and he's in perfect stealth position? I guess what? they are not coming back out? I guess these guys are totally okay with murder now after trying to stop Henry from carving up Ben earlier. Okay, so I get that it is a shapeshifter, but does this mean it can also manifest physical things? Did it cut off part of its own body and leave it here? Did it go shopping for an actual costume it could wear? Pennywise Predator Vision. Also, what the hell, man? We haven't seen the perspective from Pennywise at any point of this series, but just because it has a murder boner from Evil Victor, we're gonna see the carnage through its eyes? Are we still in Stanley's pre-bath flashback right now? How is this bully's death in Stanley's flashback? Started to get the sense that maybe they didn't think the structure all the way through. <laughs> you know, I'm a little worried about this character named Belch eventually getting typecast. Huh, I guess the shitter was full. Wait, Pennywise killed Victor and Belch, but all he did was turn Henry into David Bowie? Hands quick! I have absolutely zero idea of what's going on right now. It appears to me as if instead of shooting at it like they'd talked about, they had a secondary plan to hold hands as a luminescent turtle shell floated over them. I mean, what was the fucking plan here? Duck and cover? I am eternal. I am the eater of worlds. And I suddenly realized I sound much eviler with a British accent, so I'm going to workshop that for this finale. Nice, Tim got a head start on his makeup removal for the day. Swear to me that if it isn't dead, it will come back. I swear. I swear. I swear it. Peer pressure. I swear. Oh, it's a sweet, completely innocent promise to defend each other in the future. So moving. I wonder if it reads as moving in the original book. Reading. Reading. Sweet Jesus, Stephen. What the f man? You're not gonna die! A message from the CinemaSins universe! Hey, did you know that we here at CinemaSins have a podcast? Huh? I did not know that. It's true! It's called SinCast, and we've been doing it since all the way back in 2015. Seriously. Excuse me, excuse me. Exactly how long have I been asleep? But since you're currently on YouTube, you may prefer to listen to stuff here, right? Goddamn right. For that reason, we're debuting the official Sincast YouTube channel. Yes! You'll be able to listen to sober movie analysis. This movie does have so many good moments mm -hmm. that I, I do think ultimately it'll be easy for most people to overlook the, the stuff that doesn't work quite as well. In-depth dives into a variety of cinematic topics. No, this movie is absurd. It's my type of absurd, though. Mm -hmm. Interviews with amazing guests. Something in me said, just shut up. 
And Miss Lansbury said, oh, I couldn't. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and she sang the first couple of lines, oh my God. a cappella. And the place went wild. And much, much more. Yeah, yeah it wasn't until uh, I watched you in bed at the hospital <laughs> <laughs> that he finally gets the girl at the end. I want a whole list of alternative titles. <laughs> we'll be adding new episodes weekly, and we'll be uploading our backlog of episodes that have been previously published. So, subscribe today, and we hope you enjoy listening as much as we love talking. That's what I sound like. An ornithologist. I like cataloging things and finding their logical order. No! I just want to forget about it. Forget about it. Hey, forget about it. Forget about it. Forget no us. I made a promise. We've been through a lot together, Rich. I am eternal child. I am inevitable.